Good evening from the laser disc repair bench. Tonight we have a CLD V850 and this is going to be kind of a retrospective video. The fixes for the most part have already been applied but I wanted to go over uh, what was done to this, what was wrong, and kind of give a, a better idea of how to troubleshoot some things with this model and I can list out some similar models too. So let's get into it. Alright, so uh, looking at the top of this we have um, it opened up and you can kind of see inside the similarities for this unit are going to be a CLD D503, D703, uh, CLD99 which is one of the elite models and so you can use parts somewhat across um, these. This board here is going to be probably not shared uh, between the 99 but other parts like the laser, the tray, um, more of the guts uh, can be used between models. Uh, so just to go over a few things that happened uh, when I got this player in, it was you know, no power, not working, um, and what I found was, um, for one thing, the power supply, you know, that's, that's going to be the root of your problem if your machine won't turn on. And so I had to manually eject the tray. Uh, once I got the tray out, I was able to get the power supply out. And there were actually a couple breaks and a couple leads broken on the power supply. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and pull that power supply. I'm going to show you what it looks like and uh, what I did to, to fix it. And I also did a recap too, uh, which I'll include a link to, uh, to a photo. Um, of what capacitors go on what spots on the board. So let's get this thing opened. Um, also wanted to mention a few other things. The um, Once I did get this thing working, the uh, grip ring was a problem that has not been replaced yet, so I'll be able to show that issue with it spinning up discs and making a, a very distinct noise. The flipping to side B was uh, broken as well troubleshot that we'll get into that and then the side B centering so as soon as I would get a disc to flip over to or I mean get the laser to flip over to side B it would try to read try to read and then it would just go back over to side A so actually the centering adjustment was just not set at all so we'll go over that as well lots to look at in this video all right so we got the overhead view on the player now I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on just so you can see it cycle for the initial startup And that's about it. So we eject the laser disc tray. And that rubbing you here, I think I've got something sticking up just a little bit. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and push in this one tab. Pull out the tray. And we're going to focus our attention on removing the power supply. So I'll pull power from the unit. And the tricky thing with this one is the uh, leads are soldered on uh, to the power supply. It's not a simple Molex plug that you can pull out and you know get the power supply out. So it takes a little bit more um, than us to remove it. But pull this thing a couple times. So, and then there are, this up so you can see it, uh, spindle motor connection, and then these two ribbon cables. You have to lift up, and then these pop out. So there's actually a total of four screws on this power supply board. There's one right here. You can't see it right now, but that corner actually broke off in shipping or at a different point in this player's life. So I can't really secure that last one down. All right. So this thing is free. Uh, looks like we should be looking at replacing that cap. 
got a bit of a bulge to it. Um, did not touch that one. So, jumping right into it. Because this corner got chipped away, this last lead here was going through there at that corner. And so I had to identify that and solder a jumper across. And then same with here. I actually repaired this once, put it back in and everything, and it still didn't work. And so I thought, what could it be now? And it's hard to see it. There's a crack right here, hairline crack. Hairline crack. And then that actually goes right here and through. So again, I had to solder another jumper, and this time it actually worked. The unit came online. Uh, I had to troubleshoot a few other things, just gear timing in the tray, stuff like that. But um, definitely if you get a player and the power won't come on, uh, check for breaks in the, in the board, check for cold solder joints. It could be a lot of things, but it all starts here. So now that we've looked at that, I'm going to go ahead and fix this cap and I'll go ahead and put this thing back together and we'll look at the other stuff. Just real quick, um, since I've got the old one pulled, if you ever wanted to see a semi-bulging cap, this thing's got a little bit of a dimple to it on the top. Um, same capacitor, just different manufacturers, different years, you know, so they've gotten to shrink them down a little bit. Um, but you can see this one is flat as can be in this one's definitely got some roundness to it. All right, so we've got the power supply back in. It's all wired and happy and everything. The next thing I wanted to show you was kind of a, a twofer. So let's get both of these into the frame. Uh, this is your side B centering screw. And when I got the player, it was literally all the way open. So you can kind of see there's a gap right now. And if I adjust this, this thing pushes in, closes that gap, and pushes the like the rail over. There's like an adjustment piece that pushes over uh, to adjust the centering for the, the laser when it's on side B. And so I had to start from basically scratch. You know, this thing turned all the way over, flipped over to side B, and then quickly, you know, brought it in a little bit and eventually found center. It didn't skip anymore. And then I'll have to lock that in with some kind of clear nail polish or some kind of semi-permanent glue. Uh, you want to be able to unlock it at some point if you need to readjust the centering. And then the other thing I wanted to show you is the flip mechanism. This thing had broken where it wouldn't turn. It would kind of like chatter, you know, it would get mostly to side B. And then you'd hear, doo -doo 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 -doo, you know, the laser guiding uh, running on the rail. And the problem was this spring This spring right here, it's really small, it's hard to see. Here, let me zoom in. This thing had gotten so stretched out. And so I was able to pull it off and kind of compress it again with a pair of pliers and put it back on, but it was so loose that this had too much play in it and it wasn't allowing uh, things to flip over successfully to side B. So I know it's a little different to watch it when it's already fixed, but I just wanted to point out some of the pain points and some of the areas you might see when uh, when diagnosing this yourself. Finally, the uh, grip ring, pretty straightforward. Um, you have to remove these two screws, these two screws, uh, preferably the tray or have the tray ejected. And once you have this pulled, you can access the, uh, the spindle motor. It's right underneath here. And just take an X-Acto knife. There's videos out there. Um, but take the old one off, put the new one on. I will run through and show you what the sound is like when um, don't have it replaced. Go crooked.
Here we go. So let me put a disc in. Now that we have the tray back in. That sound is what you'll hear when your grip ring is going out. It's probably not as easy to hear it when your player is closed, um, but that, that whoosh sound, definitely need to at least clean it, uh, clean the grip ring, but replacement is only what comes next. I'm gonna film a little bonus footage. Let's, we're gonna go ahead and flip it over to side B. I've got this thing completely wide open on the adjustment. Ready to go as soon as it's going to read. It seems happy so far. When you adjust this, you want to watch out on skip back. And we're about 13 seconds in so far. I'm going to skip back. Normally it's about 30 seconds to 3 minutes. You'll see that skip back. But it's really fine adjustments on this thing. This is also another indicator if this thing is really slow to spin down then you have a grip ring problem. Alright so that pretty much covers the issues I was having with this player and like I said, just kind of different format tonight, going over the problems once they're fixed, but still good to explain it, good to see it. Thanks for watching and hope to see you on the next video. Thanks.